Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Today we're going to take a look at some bad brake lines on my 2007 Pontiac Vibe. So here's a close-up look at the problem. You can see the brake line is all rotted right here where it bends down and around the wheel well. Now actually if I go underneath the car with the camera you can see that all the brake lines under the car are in really good shape. It's just right here where the problem is. So you may be able to notice all these fittings are wet. That's because I've been letting them soak with PB Blaster for a few days. I've got a 10 millimeter wrench and I'm gonna see if I can loosen this fitting. Now chances are something's gonna snap here and I may not be able to get that all the way out. So I may end up having to replace this whole brake hose, but we'll start here and see what happens. As you saw, the nut just rounded over here. So, I think we're going to have to go for some vice grips and see if we can get it off that way. There. Oh, that actually broke loose. I can't believe that actually broke loose, but it did. So now I'll spin this out of here. You may be able to see, as I do, the broken part of the line is just twisting, but that's to be expected. We're going to cut that piece off anyway. Interestingly enough, this is loose. I can spin it by hand, the threads are backed all the way out, but I can't get it out. Now upon further investigation, the brake hose actually looks okay. But down here, this brake line that goes between the end of the hose and the back of the wheel cylinder looks pretty good, but when I feel it with my finger back here, I can feel some scale on it. So I think what I might do is just pull the hose off and replace the hose and this line here while I'm at it. To get the brake hose off, I have to remove these clips that are holding it to the bracket. There's one here and one here. I'm going to get a screwdriver behind this and try to pry it out. Now that that's broken free, you can just slide it out with a pair of pliers. And we'll just tap this to break it loose. So I was going to pull this clip, but I may need to loosen this fitting before I do. Now I did try the wrench on it. It's pretty well solid. But I think before I do that, I'm going to try and loosen this one. And then maybe I can slip the whole thing through the bracket and not have to fight with it so much. Oh, that one loosened. Now that's good news. That means I probably won't have to replace the drum as long as I can crack the bleeder loose. That's all loosened up and released just fine. So we're good to go there. So now I should be able to just pop this clip. Now I just gotta play some origami snake charming here and I should be able to get this out of here. So we're taking a look at the driver's side now. I'm gonna do the same thing over here that I did on the passenger side. I'm gonna break this loose where the line is rotted, unclip the hose, and then I'll try and undo this brake line at the caliper, and then take the whole assembly out. So I decided to get my brake hoses and my brake lines from O'Reilly's. This is one of the brake hoses that I got, and they are the same on both sides. Here's the part number. I'll leave links down below in case you wanna look, but make sure you get the right part for your vehicle if you're doing something like this. So I checked around at various places and nobody makes a pre-bent line to fit this end of the brake hose. So I'm gonna to have to make my own. While I was at O'Reilly's, I picked up a couple of NICOP brake lines. These are CNJ 312s and they have the 10 millimeter fitting on them. Now the NICOP is usually pretty easy to bend so hopefully I can get pretty close to the original factory bend. One thing I'm going to make sure that I do before I start bending these lines is to make sure that the fitting is down here next to the flared end. Otherwise, if I start bending the tube and the fitting is over here, I won't be able to slide it back. Now as I go along making my bends, I can use a marker to kind of help me position where the bends should be. This stuff's usually pretty easy to work with, so in some cases, I won't even really need that tubing bender to kind of maneuver this where I want it. So this isn't a perfect replication of the factory, but it should be close enough. And in fact, this piece is just a little bit longer than the factory one. So as I install this, I'm sure I'm gonna have to work at it and kind of change the bends a little bit, but this should get me close as an initial attempt. This brake hose is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which end I work from but I am going to put one end into the bracket here for now. Now I'm going to bring in the newly bent brake line and I'm going to install it in the end of the brake hose here. I'm not going to fully tighten it, I'm just going to finger tighten it for now. Now that that's in, I'll spin this so that the flats on the fitting line up with the flats on the bracket so it drops in fully. Now I'll install the clip. 
making sure that it engages to the grooves that are in the fitting on the end of the brake hose so that it locks everything in place. Now I'll work on installing the free end of the brake line into the fitting on the back of the wheel cylinder. Now, of course, to get everything to line up here, I'm going to kind of need to re-bend things just a little bit. So I've got that lined up fairly well, and I'll just finger tighten this for now to hold it in place. Now for the fun part. I need to cut off a section of this old rusty brake line and re-flare it. And then I'm going to install this coupler on one end, and then a short piece of this NICOP brake line, part number CNJ308, on the other end. So to do all the brake line cutting and flaring, I'm going to use this tool that I picked up from Amazon. So I'm going to start off with the cutting tool and cut the old brake line off of my car. I'm going to cut this back somewhere beyond this clip on a straight part of the brake line so that the new coupling doesn't interfere with the clip or the way the line holds on to the car. So I'm going to get my cutting tool positioned roughly where I want and I'm going to tighten the thumb screw up just so it's barely snug. It's emergency brake cables in my way a little bit but I should be able to spin this and then kind of tighten it as I go to cut the line. So we got a nice clean cut on the line. Now I'm ready to flare it. This is coated brake line. There's sort of a rubber sheath on this. So I need to cut that back. So I'm gonna go back right here about where this bend is and do that. So I'm gonna spin the cutting tool around just a few times and very lightly, just to cut through the sheathing. I wanna make sure that I don't actually cut into the brake line. Once I'm through the sheathing, I can use a pair of pliers to kind of crack it loose and then strip it off almost like I would a wire. Now that the sheathing is cut back, I'm gonna use this razor knife to kind of clean out any burrs and fold over from when I trimmed the line back. So I almost forgot, arguably, <laughs> the most important part. You gotta put the fitting onto the line here before I do any flaring. So I've got the flaring tool clamped over the end of the line with the fitting back here and the beveled part of the tool facing towards the cut end of the line. Now I cranked this as tight as I could with a screwdriver so that when I put pressure on this, it doesn't push the tool back down the line and screw up the flare. So now I'm gonna bring in my 3 16 anvil and I'm gonna slip it over the end of the line. Now I'll bring in the flaring tool and line up the cone with the depression on the top of the anvil. Now I'll tighten this up by hand first. Okay, so as I tighten this up, I'm trying to keep an eye on this and make sure that the flare actually happens and that it's just not pushing the tool down the line. Okay, once that's fully seated, I can loosen this back up and we'll take it off. So now the end of that line is mushroomed over nicely in there. So now I'll just bring in the flaring tool without the anvil and do the second part of the flare. I'll get the cone centered in the end of the line and now I'll just tighten this up slowly and keep an eye on it as it flares. Okay, we'll crack this thing off of here. And we'll see if this flare came out any good. So there's the flare. It actually came out okay. It's not perfect. And I need to clean up some of this coating that's in here and make sure it doesn't cause any problems. But the biggest problem I had is that when I took the tool off, the end of the line got bent a little bit here and I couldn't get the fitting <laughs> to slip back over. But I ended up working on it with some pliers. I got it straightened out enough to get the fitting there and I think it'll work. It's not quite perfectly square the way I'd like it to be, but it should be close enough. So I didn't have the camera on for this part, but I threaded the NICOP line onto this end and then I just started bending it to kind of fit. You can kind of see it loops around. And then I put my coupler fitting. So I've got everything fitted together just hand tight for now. It all looks like it routes okay and fits fine. So now I'm gonna grab some wrenches and just tighten everything up. on what the hell so it looks like this side's all set I'm gonna go over to the other side and pretty much repeat the process so all the lines are tightened back now I'm gonna add some brake fluid and get it into the system now my system was completely empty so there's gonna be a lot of air bubbles in here so I'm just gonna add this slowly 
and let the air kind of percolate out as you can see there. As you can see behind me, I've got the wheels off and I'm ready to bleed all the brakes on the car. I'll have my son pump the pedal five times and then hold it while I open the bleeder screw and let the fluid and air out into my container. And we'll repeat that process on each wheel until all the air comes out. And then we'll move to the next one. And I'll keep an eye on the reservoir to make sure it's topped off with brake fluid after each cycle. I'm gonna start bleeding the passenger side rear first, since this is the wheel that's furthest from the master cylinder. Then I'll move over to the driver's side rear, passenger side front, and then driver's side front. And hopefully that'll get all the air out of the system. Pump it. Hold it. Okay, let go. Okay, whenever you're ready, pump it. Hold it. Oh my gosh, it's full of air. We've got the system bled. The pedal's feeling pretty good now. I'm gonna get the wheels put back on and take this thing for a test ride and make sure the brakes still work. So the brakes on the Vibe are all set. And in fact, this car is ready for its new owner. He's coming to pick it up in just a few minutes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna learn more about my channel, check the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.